the JR Pass is dead. In October of 2023, they changed the JR Pass. And many people are saying it is dead. So today let's go over how the JR Pass has changed. Is it worth it? Why did they do this? And we're also gonna go over some alternatives. So whether you're a first time traveler to Japan or a seasoned one who has not come over since the pandemic, this video is for you. So because this change just happened in October of 2023. Most of the information on the internet about the JR Pass, about how you could travel around Japan is outdated and just wrong now when talking about train travel especially. I made an announcement video last year, but I filmed that before the changes went into effect. So I wanna go over it one more time and talk about like what actually happened in the end, how it actually changed and what you can do to travel around Japan now. But I'm gonna try to make this really easy to understand for anyone, even if you've never come to Japan before, cause there's a lot of like terminology and stuff that I think gets very confusing. So yeah, everything that has been considered like common sense up till now when traveling in Japan, using the JR Pass is is basically just, it's obsolete now. Cause before pre 2023 October, you could get the JR pass without really thinking too much about it. And it would probably pay itself off just by going to and from Kyoto and like a side trip and back to Tokyo. Not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> now you, you really need to reconsider it and you really need to do the math for your trip. You have to pre-plan. So let's start off simple. Let's just go over what is the JR Pass. I want to begin by explaining what JR even is because a lot of tourists get very confused. Rightly so. It is very easy to make mistakes with because the naming can be very confusing. So JR Pass stands for Japan Rail Pass. And JR is just in very simple terms, a group of companies. Basically all the train lines that different JR companies operate now were once all controlled by the government before becoming privatized. This was many decades ago. And when it privatized, it didn't just do it into one company, it split itself off into different regions. And this is where people can make mistakes very easily. So you have like JR West, which covers like Osaka and Kyoto. And then you have JR East, for example, which covers Tokyo. There's also more than that. But basically JR is a group of railway companies. So why I'm telling you this and why it's important is because the JR Pass is very unique and great in the way that it stretches across all these different companies. This is the only pass that does this and it is only available for foreign tourists. I cannot get it because I live here and Japanese people also cannot get it. It is just for tourists. There are other types of JR regional passes, which I'm gonna cover more later, but basically these passes are limited only to the certain region that one JR group operates in usually, but more on that later. So basically the JR pass gives you access to any JR branded train in Japan almost. And this means of course, bullet trains, which is what most people use it for. You don't have to worry about the region. It's very free. And this is easily one of the main draws for the pass. This and its affordability. But before we hop into that, I want to clarify for tourists because this is a bit confusing. Trains are run by many different companies and governments in Japan. It took me a while to grasp this because I'm from like suburban America. But basically if you get the JR pass. You can only ride JR branded trains. And even within Tokyo itself, for example, this means you have to go into JR stations. There's different stations and different lines for different companies. It's kind of, yeah, confusing. So for example, you can ride the Yamanote line here in Tokyo, which is one of the most famous train lines here, but it will not give you access to the Tokyo Metro or KO line trains, etc. cetera. There, there are just too many companies really to go over, but basically just think of it this way. If you're thinking about getting the JR pass, really just be concerned with your long distance travel because that is what JR like specializes in for local travel, like around Tokyo. It's not as important. And honestly, even if you ride the JR trains, it's quite cheap, like a dollar per ride on the Yamanote line. So in summary, the JR pass allows you to travel on almost any bullet train route in Japan. In addition to other local routes run by JR too. Any in the country for a flat fee, depending on the number of days of pass you get. So as I mentioned previously, up until a few months ago, up until October, 2023, this pass was an incredible deal. It was like a no brainer for most people to buy it. Not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> and the Japanese government has known this. That is why 
only foreign tourists can use the pass. This is important to note, especially when we talk about why the price was raised. So let's go over the price change. <laughs> the new prices for the JR Rail Pass are as follows. Seven days is 50,000 yen. 14 days is 80,000 and 21 days is 100,000 yen. It almost doubled in price. <laughs> Before the price hike, the regular seven day pass was just under 30,000 yen. Now it's 50,000. It's, it is wild. <laughs> also, there are two classes here. The ordinary for most people, it's gonna be more than fine. I would only do the green if you are looking to splurge. So yeah, um, Maybe that alone will answer your question if it is worth it. But let me go over some sample itineraries so you can decide for yourself. So these are going to be the regular prices for standard bullet train tickets. So a round trip from Tokyo to Kyoto would normally cost you 26,640 yen. Again, the new price for the seven day pass is 50,000 yen. Come on, Allison, surely if we just add some other destinations in this seven day period, we'll make it worth it. Let's see. So let's say you go from Tokyo to Kyoto to Nara to Osaka to Tokyo again. This is like a super common trip a lot of people make. Would only run you 30,150 yen. Let's say you're gonna go a bit farther out. Tokyo to Takayama to Kanazawa to Kyoto and back to Tokyo. I recommend this route, by the way, it's very nice. But even this would cost only 38,800 yen. Now look, personally, when talking about seven days, I wouldn't recommend more stops than that. That's already kind of cutting it a bit tight. You're gonna have to like speed run Kyoto, basically. But let's say you really, you're, you wanna hit all the locations, okay? So let's say you go from Tokyo to Takayama to to Kanazawa, to Kyoto, to Nara, to Hiroshima, back to Tokyo. This would finally make it worth it at 56,816 yen, but honestly, it is like an impossible trip. At least if you wanna have a relaxed, fun time and not change cities every day. But that's basically what you have to do to make this new pass price worth it. You have to change cities like every day, every other day, which can be very tiring. So yeah, basically, unless you're gonna be traveling a lot, like more than I'd recommend, you're not gonna make your money back on this pass, especially for the seven day ticket. 14 and 21 day ones are a bit more complicated. You might be able to get a good value on them depending on what you're doing, but basically you really need to do the math beforehand. So no, for most people, I would not recommend the JR Pass at all. But before we move on, let's go over some other updates that happened in the COVID period that apply both to regular train traveler people and JR Pass people. So luggage storage. As of May, 2020, you have to reserve if you're bringing large luggage onto the train. You are required to reserve for any luggage between 160 and 250 centimeters and cubic volume. This is a very large luggage. It's very large. Anything over 250 you can't bring, but also there are exceptions to this rule like strollers and I think bikes, like foldable bikes. But up until now, you've basically been able to use the luggage space that is at the back of each bullet train car very freely, maybe too freely, because it was kind of like a free for all, because there's really only realistically about enough space for like six suitcases maybe in each train car. These train cars are big. All you have to do now is reserve in advance. It is free. You just need to make sure you're reserving the right seats. So in most train cars, this is going to be the rearmost seats in the back of the car. You're gonna wanna reserve this. You're gonna wanna do it in advance because I bet they're gonna sell out quite quickly depending on when you're coming, when you're taking the train. Also, some trains have like space in between the cars for luggage, but I don't see this as often. And in this case, you still need to reserve specific seats, but you're gonna have to look out for it when you're reserving. But let's say, you board the train, you didn't reserve the luggage seats. Beware that if you can't put it above you, it's going in front of you. So bullet train seats are a lot more spacious than like airplane seats and stuff like that. You can actually fit like a normal suitcase in front of your legs and still like not be super uncomfortable the whole time. It will not be the most comfortable, but you can do it, I see people do it. But if you don't reserve the luggage space in advance, but you still wanna use it, you can supposedly, but you have to pay a small fee. I say supposedly because I don't really know how much they actually enforce this. And a lot of people have commented saying like they don't. But if you don't wanna bring your luggage on the train, what I really recommend is sending your luggage ahead through like Yamato. It can get from Tokyo to Kyoto in like two days. It's very reliable. 
please look it up. I've talked about it in previous videos. Not gonna go into super detail now, but keep that in mind. Next, if you're using the JR Pass, you cannot ride Nozomi trains. What is a Nozomi train? <laughs> so basically there's different types of models of bullet trains and Nozomi are going to be the fastest ones that run between like Tokyo and Kyoto, for example. Most trains are gonna be like Hikari, but it is possible to buy a supplementary ticket, pay even more money on that, JR Pass. If you want to ride the Nozomi trains, it would save you about 30 minutes from Tokyo to Kyoto, but it's like a 5,000 yen upcharge, I think, so I don't really think it's worth it unless you're like really in a rush. Next, reserve your seats. This is not just for the JR Pass. I'd recommend this actually to anyone, but it also applies to JR Regional Passes. So JR Pass and JR Regional Passes, I'm gonna talk about those in a minute. You can reserve seats for free with the pass. You don't need to pay anything extra. If you're not using a pass and you're riding the bullet train, reserving a seat only costs like a few dollars more. So I would, I would do it for peace of mind. Basically bullet trains are gonna have cars that are only reserved seats and then some cars that are unreserved, but Okay, look, if you're not getting on the train at like the first stop, I wouldn't risk the unreserved seating unless you're traveling at like an off time, maybe. But these seats will fill up fast, especially on like weekends or during heavy travel periods. And if you're traveling like as a family, especially, it, look, it's not worth it. Pay the extra money for reserved seating. Cause look, during peak season, if all the reserved seats are booked out and you're trying to ride unreserved, but maybe they're all full, you're gonna be standing on that train for two and a half, three hours. Reserve your seat. And as of 2020, you can actually reserve your seats online with the pass. And you can also just use the automatic ticket gate now without like having to show a guy your like paper ticket every time now, I think. Kind of depends on the route. But if you do wait till you're in Japan to reserve seats or you're just not using the JR Pass and you want to reserve seats, I would just go up to the go up to the people. You can reserve your seats at some machines in some stations, but it's like it's a bit hard. So just look for like a JR service counter or a Midori no Madoguchi, which is like a ticket counter. They usually have like a tourist area and then like a Japanese speaking area. <laughs> and really, if you have any questions during your travels, you want to change a ticket, whatever, just go up to these people. They're usually very helpful and it's, it's just so much easier than trying to figure it out yourself. So why did, why did they do this? Why, 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 why? Because they basically just really nerfed like the most popular rail pass ever. And now look, of course, I do not know the internal discussions that happened, but I think basically the reason the price was jacked up 70%, it boils down to two main reasons. One, inflation. This one's probably pretty obvious, and I don't think it's unreasonable that they increased the price. And they should have done so earlier, really. However, to increase it 70% in one go, <laughs> like, <laughs> Come on. But seriously, the price beforehand was absurdly low, but I think it's ridiculous that they didn't slowly increase it over the years and instead just blew it up. But yeah, the price was super low. So let's think about the context here. The JR Pass was actually introduced in 1981 and the price did not change at all since then, <laughs> at all. It was long overdue for like a price increase, don't get me wrong, but but at the same time, the bullet train price for locals has been steadily increasing. I think some locals were also very kind of upset about this, like that tourists could ride the bullet train for so much cheaper than locals can, like so much cheaper. <laughs> okay, and two, so they introduced the pass again in 1981. And back then Japan was not the popular destination it is today. Nowadays, Japan is on the top of those tourist destination website ranking things consistently. And really the scene, the tourism scene in Japan has changed dramatically over the past decade, two decades. So the past really was intended to encourage tourists to explore areas they otherwise wouldn't. And yes, that even meant going to Kyoto back then, but then also, you know, going to Kanazawa, going to I don't know, Nagoya. But do they need to encourage tourists to do this now? Probably not, right? <laughs> People are gonna go where they wanna go regardless of the price of the train ticket, probably. And it is much easier for tourists to even learn about these less popular destinations with the internet. Like, look, people are gonna go to Kyoto whether they have the JR Pass or not, right? That's just my guess. That's just my guess. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments if you have any alternative ideas. But first, Alternative suggestions. What can you use if not the JR Pass? There's a lot. So now that the JR Pass has basically been priced into becoming obsolete, basically, for a lot of people, there's still other ways you can travel 
So of course the most obvious is just do the same trip you'd be doing, but just buy the tickets individually. But other than that, <laughs> as I've mentioned a few times in this video, there's something called JR regional passes. These are one of my favorite things to use because actually foreign nationals, even living here, can use them too. And sometimes they open it up to Japanese people. So I have a link down below in the description where you can view all of them. There's many, but basically you're buying a pass to travel around a specific region, say, the Tohoku region or central Japan or just Nagano, that kind of thing. But these regional passes are often still worth it. Of course, you need to plan out your itinerary, but it's a lot easier to get your money's worth out of these passes. Next, another thing I have to mention, because if I don't, people are going to like attack me in the comments is the Seishin 18 pass. I also have a link for this down below, but honestly, I don't really recommend it if you care about the time. If you're trying to do the cheapest trip to Japan possible, great, look this up. But basically it costs 12,050 yen and it lets you go on any JR train line in the country, except express and bullet trains. So basically it's only local or rapid lines. Uh, so it'll take you all day probably to get to where you're trying to go. Also, this ticket's only available at certain times of the year and the target audience is college kids. There is a way, however, to use this to make it like worthwhile. And that is because it is valid for five days, but you could actually split this up between people. So like if you have a party of four, you could just use it to do a day trip for the four people and come back and then you'd only have one day left over on it. But longer journeys are so miserable. It can be really hard. Like I know people are gonna be like, no, I love it. Good for you. If you like it, then look it up, seriously. I did it before, it was hard. You also really have to coordinate train schedules, which is probably the hardest part. Just know what you're getting into if you buy that pass. But aside from trains, there are buses and planes, which many people often forget about. So Japan has some very nice highway buses. They are clean. They are nice. They are speedy and affordable. And it's also a really good way to see the countryside. I often use these if the trip is like within like a four hour drive from Tokyo max ish, but they also have like Overnight buses, I know a lot of people take these from like Tokyo to Kyoto. You can do it really cheap. I'm not an overnight bus girl myself. <laughs> and also note that you will be at the mercy of traffic. <laughs> like if you're on a bus trying to come back into Tokyo on a Sunday night, expect like two hour delays. But there's also planes. Flying, it's not that expensive. There's lots of LCCs here and it's pretty easy. So I'm, I'm from the US, <laughs> so compared to that, domestic flights here so easy it's really simple you can get from like the security gate to your gate in like 20 minutes and actually if you are going somewhere like to hokkaido or to kyushu or something i highly recommend flying over taking the train so do look into this option okay so that was a huge information dump of a video <laughs> so please let me know what do you think about the changes to the jr pass and if you have any other information that i may have left out please leave it down below in a comment and if you have any questions just feel free to ask, even if I don't respond. Hopefully a kind-hearted commenter will do it too. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like the video if you learned anything new and subscribe to my channel for more videos about my life here in Japan, about traveling in Japan, and I'll see you guys back here again very soon. Bye.